that thing still not working? Apparently not. All right. Hi, guys. So tonight there's an SI session in Rockefeller 301. All three of us will be there. We'll each have two problems for you. Uh, buffers are kind of hard, so if you want to come do buffers, we would like that. 7.30 to 9.30 in Rockefeller 301. Also, um, my iPods that I didn't pay for count has risen to two, so if it's yours, you should let me know. You've got two iPods, your phone? Yeah. Wow. Is it black? <laughs> you have to tell her this, the playlist on it to get it back. And what song do you know that everybody has on their iPod? Tell me what's on my iPod. Don't. <laughs> Something old, right? Bruce Springsteen, Eric Clapton. You're talking about my playlist, too. See? So the single largest number of things on my iPod is Queen. You know what? I think that. Uh, huh? No, it's the biology class. Copy. Um. I've received two so far, so that's not too bad. I take it this thing's not working. I need batteries. Can you email me a hard copy? Mail? How are you going to get to me by 5 o'clock? No, I wanted the hard copy too. It's two by five o'clock. Hard copy printed. I'd like to. Shanks Mayor? Fluff it? Will I be in? Yeah, I'll be in my office Friday. Slide it under my door. Thank you. I saw a hand go up back there. What was that? That one's working too. All right, thank you. Did a hand go up back there? No? Yes? Yes. I would like a cop on your paper, folks. I think it's working. It's just not picking up well today. I would like a digital copy of your paper. Whether you put that in the digital Dropbox or you email it to me, doesn't matter. Um, I'd like something that I can actually write on. So uh, I plan to take your digital copies and, and mark them up and send them back to you. Um, I would also like hard copies if, if for you to print one copy out and drop it off, please. Uh, mainly because uh, a lot of people around campus have been asking about this project, other faculty. Um, there, are, there is more than one faculty member on campus who has questioned my sanity of assigning a term paper to a class this size. Um, and so they're curious what kind of papers I get out of it. So I'd like to have hard copies that I can share with them that are not marked on. So I'm not going to write on your hard copies. Those are for my file, um, an unadulterated version of it. So that's why I'd like a hard copy of it. So, all right. If I'm not in my office, either slide it under my door or put it in the, uh, the chemistry office and clap to 12, I think. There's a mailbox in the chemistry office. You just have to figure out which one's mine. I don't know. I just know where it is. It's right in the, it's right in the middle. <coughs> so, but I can't remember if it's above my name or below my name. So if you get it in the wrong box, it'll go in Dr. Silvestri's box. He'll just grade it as lab report. So um, that might be a good thing. I don't know. Uh, also, don't forget, we will not have class Friday, so uh, you can start your vacation after the biology test. Uh, is there a bio test tomorrow? There is for those in 216. That's what it is. 
216 and organic chemistry have tests tomorrow, so on the same day. Don't need to remind you, okay. I use acetic acid and point two molar one five. It wasn't point one, it was point one five. Did I say point one five Monday? Point one? All right, if I remember right, when we did this, we talked about the fact that acetic acid is a weak acid. As you neutralize the acetic acid with strong base, the key to, to successfully Calculating the pH as, as you go along is remembering that you're going to make a conjugate base for every mole of acid that you neutralize. So for every mole of acetic acid that I neutralize with sodium hydroxide, I'm going to make an equivalent amount of acetate ion. And so calculating the pH requires you to know both the acetic acid concentration and the acetate ion concentration. When we did this long and gory calculation with sodium hydroxide and nitric acid, you were making water as a product. So it really didn't matter what the conjugate concentration was because it wasn't going to affect the pH. Now it will. So yesterday or Monday when we did this, the initial pH, somebody will have to remind me what it was, 2.47, if I remember right. I'm sorry, 2.87. We added 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. I think this was the last one we did, right? And we got four point, is that what the four seven was? Three seven, okay. It's amazing I can remember some of these. We didn't do this one yet, right? That's where we stopped. We added 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Now we're going to add 30 milliliters. We're going to go up, we're going to double the amount. Remember, we're just starting as though we had a fresh solution. So, We start with five millimoles of acid. We've done that all the way along. We add in three millimoles of sodium hydroxide. So there's, after we neutralize as much acid as we can with the base, there's still two millimoles of acid left. The concentration now divided by 50 plus 30. Point two five. And not so high, I can't reach that high. That's better. Can you just keep using the problem on Monday? 
Yes. I'm going to keep going because we want to compare this then back to the nitric acid one. Okay. Ultimately, our goal is to compare this titration, which is what this is, between the weak acid and the strong base with the strong acid, strong base titration. That's what we got at the end of the day, or two thirds of the way through the day, Monday, when we had a calculation of the concent of uh, sodium hydroxide with acetic acid. No. It's not. It's related to what we did last Friday, but no, now it's, it's, it's similar, okay? It's ultimately leading to a, a question. Uh, the end of today, I'm going to ask you, give me three ways to make a buffer of a certain pH. By the end of today, you should be able to answer the question, give me, describe three different ways to make a buffer of a pH of a specific value and I'll, uh, and a certain volume of it. And one of the ways will be obvious to you. One of the ways, if you've been listening, you'll be able to get, and the third way will cause you to say, okay, what am I going to do, okay? So w one of them you'll get right away. So let's see, we need to have acetate ion. This is a relatively straightforward one. For every mole of base that we add, we're going to get the same number of moles of the conjugate base. Since we've added three millimoles of sodium hydroxide, the number of moles of acetate ion is three millimoles. And so the concentration of acetate ion is Now, joy of joys, you have to do the ice table again. I am going to show you a way to avoid these, by the way. Eventually, we'll have be able to skip these. I'm teaching them new tricks. I never learned these tricks. I know, I like them better than you. You can do these tricks now, though, right? They make sense. Although, what it, uh, I can tell you after class on Friday, Amelia, who, who has been through the SI for this class twice, three times, it's her third time, and took this class, and has the advanced chemistry classes that you talk about this, said to me, you've now taught me a fourth way to do buffer problems. There is no one way to do these. This is one met way to do it. This is the, f the complete way. Actually, no, there's one step even beyond this that you get in the advanced class. They all boil down to the same thing. Let's see. So if we assume x is much less than 0.025 in this case, then x is approximately 0.025, which equals, which is the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay. 
we go back to the ice table, we find out that's the hydrogen ion concentration, and so that pH is So we've got a relatively small change in pH. We've only gone up six tenths of a pH unit. Look back at your notes from Monday. When we had it had this is the weak acid pH. The strong acid pH for the initial solution was one. Right? When you added 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, I'll need to have somebody who, who's got their notes from Monday. What was the pH after we added 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? One point. When we added 30 milliliters, what was it? 1.36? 1.6. .6. .6. If I look at this curve down here, And we sit there and we say, the definition of a base, or excuse me, of a buffer, is a mixture of a conjugate, of an acid and its conjugate base, or a base and its conjugate acid, in relatively equal amounts, and it's created so as to resist changes in pH upon addition of acid or base. All right, there's a lot going on in that. If I look at this graph down here, even though I'm adding base, remember this is volume of NaOH, this region of this chart doesn't change pH very much. And when we look at these numbers, we see that. We added 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to the strong acid solution, and the pH went up by 0.17 pH units. When we added 15 milliliters of sodium, of sodium hydroxide to the weak acid, the pH went up by one and a half pH units. And yet I'm going to show you that this is still the buffer solution. This one, we went up by another point, what, three, three pH units when we added 15 milliliters of base. Here we went up by 0.6. How can that one be a buffer, the weak acid one, when this one isn't changing pH very much? When we're all done with this, I'll show you that it is possible to consider strong acids and bases as buffers, but it's not very common. And I'll show you, and I'll explain why when we're done. Right now, if I take the definition of a buffer as just something that ch doesn't change pH when you add base to it, this curve says there's a, p there's a buffer going on. That other one, we started at a pH of about three. We went up to a pH of about four. Now we're at a pH of about five. So our curve is looking something like that. If I add 15 more milliliters of base, I can go through and I can take and do the uh, Eraser magic. I've now added four and a half millimoles of base to my initial solution. The excess acetic acid is 0.5. The acetic acid concentration. All these things have to change. I'll slow down so you can get caught up. Don't worry. What did you get for a number? I'm You're working on it. You can only push buttons so quickly on there? It's a good thing I didn't program the spreadsheet to do this or I'd have been done with it, right? If the ice hadn't come this morning, I'd have had this all in the spreadsheet. 0.5 over 95. I'm sorry? 
You've gone all the way to the pH? Yeah. Oh. Nah, nah. I'm going to at least give them a chance to get caught up so I fill in some numbers. Let's see, the moles of acetate ion then are 4.5. You can see why a spreadsheet makes this very nice. It makes, you're doing the same thing over and over and over. What's that come out to be? you said? Seven two. Figure out what the pH of point five divided by ninety five. And take the negative log of that. So it's exactly the same ca calculation. We're just going through it, except now you change all those numbers over there, okay, and you end up with a pH here of 5.72. I want to jump to the equivalence point after this one, so I'm going to go right to 50 milliliters. Okay, on this chart. We're about here. Okay. If I add exactly the same amount, remember they're the same concentration of, a of base to the acid. I'm at the equivalence point. You've added an equivalent number of moles of base to the uh, number of moles of acid you started with. So you've completely neutralized all the acid. In a strong acid, strong base titration, my curve's a little bit off there. In a strong acid, strong base titration, the equivalence point, the pH will be exactly seven. In a strong base weak acid titration like this one, the pH won't be seven at the equivalence point. Because what do you make when you neutralize the acetic acid? Acetate ions. Acetate ions are not neutral, they're basic. So once I neutralize all the acetic acid, it's gone. All I've got left is acetate ions. How much acetate ions do I have? Well, this is exactly the same calculation as on that far board over there. When we added 45 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, we had, so we added four and a half millimoles of sodium hydroxide, the number of moles of acetate ions was four and a half millimoles. So how many millimoles of acetate ion have I made? The same amount here. We have 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar. So you have five millimoles of acetate ion. Do you have any acetic acid left? No, it's all neutralized. So we have five millimoles of acetate ion.
5 over 100.02? That's right. 0 0.05. That's better. So the concentration of acetate ions is 0 0.05 molar. Now, at the equivalence point, you have to ask, what is the concentration of a 0 0.05 molar solution of acetate ions? To solve this problem, we need a new equilibrium. Now we don't want to start with acetic acid because we don't have any. And we don't want to use that reaction because we don't have any H3O plus either. So there's nothing for it to react with. However, we do have water still. And so acetate ions can react with water. To make acetic acid and hydroxide ions. At the equivalence point, the initial concentration of acetate ions <coughs> is 0.05 molar. We don't care about water. There is no acetic acid. We've neutralized all the acetic acid by adding sodium hydroxide to it. And we've used up all of the uh, sodium hydroxide. So there's none of it either. Some of this will react, producing an equivalent amount of each of these. Well, this is just a straightforward equilibrium problem like all the other ones we've done. So we solve this one, we set it up. What kind of a K is it? Did Sarah not come after sitting in my office for a few minutes? There you are. What kind of a K is it? Why? Because what's the product? OH minus. And whenever you have OH minus as a product, you need a KB. But we don't know KB. If you go back and look at the original problem I gave you on Monday, I told you KA for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We don't have a K for this. How do we get it? KW over KA, because acetate ions are the conjugate base to acetic acid. we can get the value of KB. So KB equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. So now we can solve our equilibrium. I'm sorry? Oh, I don't think so. Jess is telling me that the pH is going to go down. I know why. What did you get for X? Two point seven times ten to the negative eleven. Oh, wait, what is it? Five. 
5.27 times 10 to the negative 6. Negative log of that? 5.2. He gads, the pH went down. Oh, it's the POH. Oh, that's right. Jess, did you forget that? Sorry, Jess. You opened your mouth. X is equal to the concentration of hydroxide ions, so you've just calculated the POH. Thank you. That was very good. I like that. I've done it too. 5.28. That's an ugly 8, but that's an 8. Believe it or not, that's an 8. Yes? I'd say, never mind. 5.28, which is the POH. It's a very simple, that's why I keep saying when you solve for x, go back to the table and see what x is. As Jeff said, when she looked at this, the pH went from 5.72 to 5.28, something's wrong. Those are the kinds of things that you should notice. If you got the pH going down when you added base, something's wrong. Find out what you did wrong. Trust your math. Those of you who are not trusting your math skills, I want you to start trusting your math skills. You all can do this math. It's not hard. What's hard is in the stress of a test, just writing down this number because that's what the calculator told you the answer is. And we all trust the calculators. It's only as good as the person punching the buttons. Okay? So that's the POH. So the pH. Yes, you remember the anarchistic problem solving model? Yes, do Just do it. It's 9.72. 9. Yes, 8.72. I can't do math in my head. The anarchistic problem solving model I've talked about with you guys before. I actually had the SIs read a paper on it before. Speaking of which, here's a commercial interruption. Those of you interested in being SIs for Chem 105, 106 next year, applications are starting to be accepted. You can apply at ESS. You need a faculty member recommendation. That's me. I automatically recommend anyone who wants to do it. All I do is send an email saying, yeah, go ahead, that's fine. If I don't think you should do it, I'll tell you that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I haven't had to do that yet. Heads up, though, you have to try out. You have to do a presentation in front of me and at least two other people, um, standing in front of the group, uh, that group doing a, a, what you would do for class. It's not an easy thing to do, but that's what I, I want to see how you are in front of a group. Um, I haven't regretted any of my decisions yet. Um, I don't know if Jess has decided if she's coming back yet or not. Oh, she's reapplying. Uh, last year I made Amelia go through the tryouts. Even though she'd been in SI twice already, I made her do it again. Jess might get a pass. <laughs> don't tell Amelia. I'm sorry? Uh, depending on enrollment. Yeah. The number of SIs I get depends on enrollment. So, so that's my commercial break. If you're interested, there's also room for tutors. Uh, ESS hires tutors for next year, too. So um, if you're interested at all, come see me. I'll talk with you about it. All right, so the pH is 8.72. Back to this problem. Go back to that table there. Why is the pH basic at the equivalence point? because you've now added enough base to neutralize all the weak acid, and you made a weak base. So on this curve over here, and I'm going to try and plot it a little bit better. It looks something like this. If I keep going with the calculation at this point, we stopped at this point with the strong base titration. We would neutralized all the acid um, in a strong acid, strong base titration. So every time you add more base, you're just going to change the pH because you're adding base. In a, strong, in a weak acid, 
adding a strong base to it titration such as this one, once you get past the equivalence point, you've neutralized all the weak acid, now you're adding strong base to a weak base. What do you think is going to determine the pH? The weak base or the strong base? The strong base does. So it's exactly the same values as though you were tit using a strong base in a strong acid. So the second half of the curve looks exactly the same. So that's what the titration curve for a weak acid and adding a strong base to it looks like. This region here is the buffer region. A buffer is a weak acid and its conjugate base, and you could change that to a weak a base and its conjugate acid, in relatively equal amounts. It seems like a, an arbitrary phrase, but it's extremely important. That resists changes in pH upon addition of acid or base. And notice I don't say whether it's strong acid or weak acid, strong base or weak base. A buffer will resist changes in pH whether you add strong or weak acid, strong or weak base. What that means is that if I've got a mixture of a, of a weak acid and its base, and there's relatively the same amount, say I've got acetic acid and acetate ions, and I add to it some base. The base is going to react with the weak acid. It's going to make some conjugate base. But guess what? The equilibrium gets reestablished, and so it shifts itself back to, a st to stabilize the pH back to almost where it was, if there's approximately equal amounts. If I added a strong ba acid to the weak acid conjugate base mixture, the acid would react with the base that's in there, shifting the equilibrium, and then letting it come back. Le Chatelier's principle says if you perturb an equilibrium in some way, the system will try to reestablish the equilibrium. The reason why you need relatively equal amounts is because this region right here is usually plus or minus one pH unit. This is pH on this axis. And it's plus or minus one pH unit, and this is where you're going to say, why didn't you teach us that equation before? Because of a very simple equation, which I already told you I didn't want you to learn. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. If I take any generic weak acid, I don't have to, I talked about this with a couple people earlier this week, I don't have to react a weak acid with water to get this equation to work out. I just always do because it makes more sense when I do bases. So you could either react this with water or you could just let the weak acid dissociate. It doesn't change anything. When these react, you already know what the equilibrium looks like. The Ka expression
Oops, that's right. Looks like that. I'm going to rewrite it just slightly. And actually, if you go back about two weeks, I did this exact same thing. I'm now going to take the negative log of both sides. And this is where you have to go back to seventh or eighth grade math. And remember that when you take the log of one number times another number, it's equal to the log of the first number plus the log of the second number. So I can rewrite this equation now. And a negative log is just minus one times that, so it works for negative log two. plus the negative log. I'll keep negative log in there. I'm not going to break that one up. I'm going to leave that ratio together. And now you recognize negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration is just pH. The negative log of Ka is pKa plus the negative log of A minus over HA. And if I rewrite this just one last little bit of algebra, When I bring it over to the other side, the minus, um, it becomes plus, right? If I, if I, minus, a minus becomes a plus. Okay, I'm sorry? Okay. So this is the Henderson Hasselbach equation. It's a wonderful little equation. But now we have to dissect it. You have enough information now that it is not going to be a dangerous equation to you. It can be a very dangerous equation if you use it blindly. What does it say? It says that I can calculate the pH for any weak acid conjugate base couple if I know the Ka or the pKa for that acid base pair, that conjugate acid base pair, and I know the ratio of base to acid. A minus is the weak base, is the conjugate base. HA is the weak acid. And think about that for a second. If I've got equal amounts of weak acid and conjugate base, that ratio is 1. The log of 1 is 0. So the pH, when you have equal amounts of acid and conjugate base, is equal to the pKa on that titration curve up there, those of you in Chem 113 right now, where is that? At the half equivalence point. Oh my God, why the heck did they make us do the half equivalence point? At the half equivalence point, you've got an exactly equal ratio of weak acid and conjugate base, and so they'll cancel each other out in this equation and whatever the pH is at the half equivalence point is, that's pKa. That was the whole point of that experiment. But they never tell you what the heck the equivalence point is, let alone what a half equivalence point is. Those of you who have been through 113 already remember that now. So the half equivalence point is that buffer region. Why do they have to be in relatively equal amounts? Because if you get too far outside the buffer region, now the pH starts changing significantly because you don't have enough of the conjugate base to react with the acid that you add. 
And so when you add acid, it gets used up too quickly. And so the pH starts changing. The slope of that line changes very quickly. If you, if you are asked to make a buffer of pH, where's my numbers? Up there. pH, what? Um, 5.26. Let's see, 9272.1.2.6. Let me change that. Uh, 5.36, approximately. You could use acetic acid and sodium acetate. And if you made a mixture where you had one mole of acetic acid and one mole of sodium acetate in however much water, it doesn't matter, the concentration of acetate, acetic acid and sodium acetate would be the same. So the pH would be equal to the pKa. And the pKa of acetic acid is, what's the negative pKa of that? 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 negative log. I bet it's about 5.26. Four four, nope, that makes sense, 4.74. Yep, I'm looking at the wrong numbers up there. What if I want 10, if I get 10 times more acid than base, if that ratio is 1 to 10, there's 1 mole of, a, of base for every 10 moles of acid. What's the log of 1 over 10? Negative 1. So what's the pH when you have 10 times more base than acid? It's going to be 1 unit greater than the pKa. If you have 10 times more acid than base, it's going to be 1 unit less than the pKa. The buffer region is plus or minus 1 pH unit. Why plus or minus 1 pH unit? Because that's a ratio of 10 to 1 or 1 to 10. As soon as you get outside that range, you start to have problems. So one way, remember I said there were going to be three, one way to make a buffer of a known pH is to look at pKa values and pick the one that's closest to what you want and then mix approximately equal amounts of the acid and its conjugate base in water and you've got it. That's one way. What if you only have weak acids, you don't have any conjugate bases? Could you make a buffer using just a weak acid? Yes. Not react it with water because an a, a weak acid with water gives us a pH of 2.87. That's what that first pH is up there. React it with what? Strong base. How much strong base? If I start with 10 millimoles of weak acid, how much strong base should I add? Half equivalence point half as much. If I neutralize half of the weak acid, how much weak base will I have made? However, half of however much I started with. So what will I have? I'll have equal amounts of weak acid and conjugate base. So one way to make a, a buffer is to take equal amounts of, acid, of weak acid and conjugate base and mix them together. Another way is to take the weak acid and mix it with strong base to neutralize half of it. That's two. What's the third way? What's the biologist's way of making a buffer? In, and in a lot of ways, this is the best way. Not finding it in nature and using it, that, that would be the ecologist's way of doing it, picking on specific biologists. The best way to do it would be to go to the nearest shelf and open your catalog to buffers and it says, oh, I can buy this one and buy it. And I'm serious. The best way to make a buffer is to go buy it. Because one of the things you'll find out, just a second, Emma. Emma's got a question, so don't all pack up at once. One of the things, huh? Are you just stretching? She's practicing the reach for the wall. Anyway. Um, one of the things you find out, and this is the last thing I'll give you before I answer this question, is that when you mix these things together, they never give you the pH that you think they should. And when you get back, we'll talk about why. Emma, what's up? No, the first way was to mix equal amounts of weak acid and its conjugate base. The second way was to mix weak acid and a strong base, and half as much strong base as weak acid.
And the third way is buy it. If you better make it announcement but quick, they're leaving. Just since Amelia is not here, I wanted to ask you all to nominate her for the SI Leader of the Year Award because she's good at what she does and I think she deserves it. So keep that in mind. Thank you. Amelia.